Hi, this time I wanted to talk about the fun in role-playing. I was thinking about this as I was re-watching my actual play with Tyler and Ryan, you know, the uh, Super Mash Bro actual play. If you haven't seen it yet, please check out the link in the description. We were having so much fun, in my opinion. So I started to think, this is actually a good example of fun when role-playing. Even though there wasn't too much character, non-player character interaction, there wasn't too much interaction with characters besides the two main protagonists, they were constantly interacting through role-play with the game world. Once again, for those of you that do not know, acting is not role-play. You know, there could be people, people new to the channel and to role-playing games or that have been playing tabletop RPGs and have never looked into roleplay, please check out the links in the description, my beginner's guide to roleplay and such. Roleplay is not acting. And acting can be part of roleplaying when you are talking with the non-player characters and such. But you can take a look at that actual play and they were constantly interacting with the game world through roleplay. And I thought that could be a key element, if not the key element, when it concerns the fun in roleplay, interacting with the game world. When you, as a game master, dungeon master, whatever, when you are designing the scenarios, the adventures, the levels, in the case of this, this TTRPG session, because it was like a video game inspired world, I, was, I had like levels of video games in mind when designing the scenario. You have to consider how the character's powers and abilities are going to interact with the game world or even their own ideas, even their standard actions, their more mundane or normal actions. Think about how fun it would be to use those actions, those interactions with different elements of the scenario, of the adventure, of the stages, etc. I didn't know beforehand what sort of characters uh, Tyler and Ryan were going to create. You know, they, they ended up with a Metal Slug type of character and a Sonic the Hedgehog type of character, but I had no, no idea about their powers. So when I designed these, the first level, the first world, I was, ju was just thinking about the different video game tropes, staples, some could say. And I just had fun designing the scenario, thinking if they had any sort of power, anything that allows them to uh, create explosions or become invisible or manipulate something through some sort of mental power, anything. I, I was just thinking, oh, they are going to have fun with this type of structure. Oh, they could navigate this maze using that sort of power. They could defeat these enemies using some sort of ability. And even putting that to the side, just thinking about the normal interactions, I was constantly thinking, would, would it be fun for them to interact with this floating thing? Um, are they going to experience some sort of risk or sense of danger as they try to make their way across to this other, other platform or structure? Is this non-player character going to be fun to interact with? Are they going to feel surprised by the non-player character what about the, the structure where the character is moving? Will they find it peculiar, odd, quirky? The boss encounter, are they going to find it challenging? Will they be creative enough? I think that creativity is part of the fun. You know, you can, once again, take a look at that actual play. You can see how they use their powers in very creative ways. They were not afraid to push the limits. They came up with some creative ideas. They were... Um, trustful, they, they were in complete confidence that as a game master I was going to apply things accordingly depending on their actions, their powers, the use of such abilities, powers and even their more mundane capacities. They knew that there was going to be some sort of reaction to their action and so forth, a back and forth between the game world, the non-player characters and the player characters themselves. So yes, when you are designing scenarios, coming up with ideas for your RPGs, think about the interaction 
how the players are going to have fun. In my actual play of uh, the Dark and Terrible campaign, the description will also be in the, the the link will be in the description. Even though um, C4 Crispy and um, Full Metal State or Josh, their characters are quite different from the video game characters in the Super Mash Bro campaign. Even though they don't have all, all sorts of crazy powers and abilities, within the normal human capabilities, they are having fun. When it comes to Killian, he is always thinking of how to use his psychic powers or even his psychic perception with everything that they encounter. When it comes to Esben, he is always trying to charm his way with the ladies or even with male player characters. He is quite charismatic. And he's also trying to display his excellent sword play. And even beyond that, they are always thinking about using their different weapons and tools in creative ways. You know how Esben tried to unlock that door using his knife through the slit of the door. It wasn't successful, but that's a creative way of applying things. So if you are looking for that extra spice, that fun in roleplay, consider all of the ways that the player characters can interact with the game world and its inhabitants and objects. Thank you for watching my videos. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you for your likes and your comments as always. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.